Hello and welcome. My name is Greg Lutherman, and I'm the author of Designing Search and Android Design Patterns. I'm also the co-author of the Smashing Magazine's mobile book. And I would like to tell you a little bit about my Agile mobile design workshop, just to give you a flavor of what it's like to be there. And what I'd like to do is look at mobile search, a tiny spot of it. And uh, mobile search is really important. Unfortunately, it's pretty easy to get it wrong. Here's one example of that. Unfortunately, TripAdvisor has done exactly that. So if you look at uh, the TripAdvisor homepage, there's a very helpful hotel option. Now clicking, tapping a hotel option, excuse me, actually takes you to the search screen here and tapping find hotels does give you some hotel in the area. Now the interesting thing is you do have to remember, however, to tap this little checkbox here called find hotels near me now. If you don't tap that, your results are very likely to be unpredictable. Also, interestingly enough, even though you've selected the word hotels on the home page and also clicked the find the hotels button, what you actually end up with here is additional navigation uh, in, the, in the case of three tabs that is taking up additional space on the page. So there's other things that are a little bit weird about this implementation. For example, if you uh, used a different way to access hotels, that is by searching from the action bar, by tapping the action bar here, typing in the word hotel, your results are likely to be quite different from the ones you've seen on the previous screen. For example, here you can see that the hotels you found are actually in Spain, France, Washington DC, and Austria, and not near you at all. And the results look completely different from the ones on the previous page. Here they are. Here we have a price range and distance to you uh, versus on this screen that, that look completely different. You can filter the screen, but on the filter, something weird going on here with this icon of things to do being different from this one which makes you wonder if this is something something else that the system is doing. And also there's an addition of locations tab, all of which is a little bit odd. But that's not all, said the cat. That's not all. There's yet a third way that TripAdvisor can advise you. By tapping the overflow button on the action, on the action bar, you can actually select this near me now option, which at first glance looks the most promising, but catapults you into the eat tab. Very interestingly, because all the previous searches you have been doing on the system have been for hotels. Now this, the reason why I'm picking on this area is it's actually taken up about a third of the screen. If you look at it, 32.9% of pixels have been devoted to stuff you've already selected, essentially. So there's definitely a better way to implement this. And this is exactly what I teach you at my Agile Mobile Design Workshop. Here, we systematically figure out the right things to build. And I teach you the methodology, uh, basically the how and the why. So uh, this, is, this is how we do this. We uh, use post-it notes and some very simple writing tools to create prototypes. And why do we use post-it notes? Well, most simply, they closely resemble the form factor of a mobile device. And it allows us, using a physical object that is separate from from the table itself actually allows us to test things like ergonomics and natural motions uh, and so forth. So it's really very rich experience. Now I teach you exactly how to create simple prototypes using this, using this technique. So you can jump right into testing. And this is one example of redesigning the TripAdvisor uh, application using the parallel architecture design pattern that is actually in my book, Android design patterns using four sticky note wireframes. So very, very simple. Now in, in here, we deliberately try to keep it as close to the original TripAdvisor interface as possible. But in the simple redesign, as you can see, there's only really four wireframes that, that we need to do to implement this entire, this entire system. First off, there's the homepage. Notice I've rearranged the two options here on the homepage, agreeing with the second design that actually restaurants is the most likely option when looking near you. Notice I added the filter strip here on top of the page. It says browse nearby right there. Um, that is telling you what the result will be after tapping the hotels. Notice here the trip, the trip advisor results. 
I simply type in the word hotels and nearby is pre-selected. So you get extended stay Silicon Valley San Jose as one of the results. And there's your filter option and you may change the query at any time you like. Now tapping back takes you back to the home screen where you can actually do a search for a specific hotel name. Tapping the search button takes you to what's quote the advanced search page where you can type in Hilton San Jose. It also gives you a list of previously typed queries and a nice search history that is an additional design pattern that we also cover in the workshop. Tapping go on this page takes you to the Hilton San Jose search page sorted by best match as you can see on this filter strip. And here you have the Hilton Silicon Valley as a um, one of the search results. So overall, you can see that there is a basic search and an advanced search screen, and both of them essentially take you to the same exact search results screen, and that's where the parallel comes in. So this one is part, um, both of these take you to the same screen, and that's two parallel workflows that take you to the same search results. Now, I only have time to show you the Android version, but in the workshop, we teach both the iOS and the Android, and most importantly, we teach you the differences because there are actually fairly significant differences in the approaches to both designs. Now, my previous workshops have sold out. For example, my UX Week uh, Adaptive Path workshop in San Francisco that have been attended by about 60 people, my 100-person workshop at UXC Studio in Tel Aviv, and my South by Southwest workshop in Texas that had 60 people in it, as well as my Mobix workshop in Berlin. Now, in addition to teaching public workshops at conferences, I also teach private workshops with nonprofits such as Associated Press and companies like Wells Fargo, and teach graduate courses as well at the Hull Business School and classes at Marquette University. And now it's your turn, because I hope to see you at my Agile Mobile Design Workshop, where you come with idea and leave with wireframes.